government versus you. There's a, a big need to bring down the cost of drugs. After the cost of hospitals in, in our health care system, it's drugs. If you're saying that a lot of people who need the drugs, you're telling me earlier in the, uh, at the break, are seniors, you can see too, starting January 11th, of, of uh, January 2011, 10,000 Canadians are going to turn 65 every day. Yeah. Okay? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, ding. This cost has to be reduced. Clear, Somebody's going to pay for it, guys. What you said now, you said yes. about the drugs. Yes. Are we against that? No, we're not. We're Good. We are in support of that. Good. My main What's your point solution? is my main the solution is to sit at the table and say, listen, guys, you are the experts in the field. Are you willing to take dollar for dollar? No, we're not. Are we willing to bankrupt the government? No, we're not. Are we willing to help? Yes, we do. Why? Because we would like to continue in business because we would like to keep serving our patients. Right. I'm expecting that the government would give me everything I ask for. I'll be a dreamer if okay, I do so this. So is this the but issue, the no is, consultation? Yeah. You were surprised. So when this came out I was on April 7th or 9th, this was a surprise. Yeah. One, of the, one of the six people, no. nine months with the government in negotiation, the end result was nothing. We already gave the government three proposals. We did not hear any feedback on the three proposals. These proposals, Nancy, have been under discussion with the pharmacy industry for almost a year, uh, more than a year, in fact. In fact, in last year's uh, report from Shoppers Drug Mart, which is a public company, they mentioned uh, in their annual report that one of the risks to their business was the government's contemplation of a new system of funding uh, generic drugs. And so uh, let us not say that this, what, this came out of the blue. You've been talking about this for a long time. And you know that uh, your government, the government, uh, right now we, we carry uh, a greater than $20 billion deficit. That's a burden on every taxpayer. 13 million Ontarians carry that burden. So your solution is uh, to take it out of the pocket of pharmacists because you mismanaged the, the budget? Is this, is this how you really you see saying, the are, value? Are you saying that a $300 million increase over uh, the past How did six you increase and a half that? Years? You increased it in, in listing medication, not paying for the service, Greg. Do can not I twist the you, argument. Can I ask you, we talked about trying to find fact and fiction here. Um, I, I, one of the other things they said is the um, there's $750 million in professional allowances that the drug, generic drug companies are paying pharmacists and Correct. pharmacies. $750 million, okay? And another $100 million the government is paying as its own allowance to you for the consulting fees no, and that, things that's like that. Promised no? It no. Been no. No. Okay, so, but there's a promise. So we've got $850 million happening. Right? No, that's a no, lot of no, 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 not at all. No, no, no. The government is taking out 750, which is the professional allowance. They are putting back 150. Can I ask you something though? For most businesses, and I'm an entrepreneur, the bank's going to say to me, "Are you viable on your own? What happens if your biggest supplier does whatever?" Yeah. So, but, is but, is this a strong business model, or are you only propped up as a, a you know, as part of this this? Um, of the manufacturers. It's a subsidized business model. What, okay, what, thank it, you. It, it's Let's a talk about the business model. It's a subsidized model. business model. Okay. It's unfortunate, Greg, that you have characterized uh, Ontario as having too many pharmacies. Fact is, the fact is, four years ago we've only seen 140 pharmacies open up. Many small stores have closed because they relied upon subsidies. Okay? We have the lowest per capita in Canada of pharmacists here in Ontario that serve the residents. We have the high we have nearly twelve million citizens that rely upon twelve thousand pharmacists for care. We are not against reducing generic prices. In fact, you can reduce them to a penny a pill. It is of no consequence to us. You can actually go and deal direct with the generic companies. That is also your business. But we are in the business of providing care, vital services to seniors and those with chronic illness. What are they? And it is, it, what are they for? For instance, things like asthma care, high blood pressure. We help people quit smoking. We do delivery. We help people, uh, seniors, maybe remain, should, remain maybe, in their is home. That, is that part of your business or an add-on to the business? I thought the business model was dispensing. 
No. No, no, no that's more. one function. That's one function. So what we're asking the government is, what we're asking the government is to stop this nonsense of trying to portray pharmacy as this uh, lucrative and very profitable business because they see a shopper's drug mart I or a Walmart. I see a commercial break. So come right back and we're going to take another look at a subsidized business model in terms of delivering pharmaceuticals to you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Focal Point. In the studio, I was almost going to say in the ring, we have uh, pharmacists, independent pharmacists, and Greg Sobera, the uh, MPP for Vaughan, with us this evening. And we're trying to make sense out of a bold move that uh, many have applauded the government making, which is to reduce the cost of drugs in our province. But there's a cost to it, and that cost right now we're talking about is in terms of what it, the impact has been, particularly on the independent pharmacist. One of the things before we go into round three I'd like to talk about is there was a point not that many years ago, and you gentlemen would all know more than I, but I recall um, Big Pharma going through this when, or something like this when the OMA or the government had said, okay, what you, you have to stop Pharma? Who, major pharmaceuticals. Major, okay. okay. Brand name pharmaceuticals. Brand name major pharmaceuticals. Right. We're told stop incenting physicians to be writing prescriptions or whatever, and, and there was, and I don't remember protests, but I remember it happening. Around that same time, I recall a survey done, who do you most trust? And for most people, it, you know, normally it's a physician, and out of the blue people are saying, I trust my pharmacist. I think that's where you are trying to take us, but I've got to be honest, guys, you're eroding that by presenting this sort of, you know, I'm angry and I'm going to take it out on somebody. For everybody watching, could you please go back and explain what you think the independent pharmacist's role is in healthcare delivery in this province? S what the value I'm is. To do that. And, I'm, and also, I'm Farid, to do that. I'd, um, a caller has actually called and said they'd love to hear mm. a little bit more from Daryl. So okay. I'm going to turn it over to Daryl to start a little bit right, as an owner of four. I, I would just like to say this. Uh, presently, under the model that we're working with, it costs us almost $14 to prepare a prescription. Currently the government... Any, any prescription. Any, any prescription. Okay, this is and dispensing. Dispensing. And under the public system, we are reimbursed $7. The government in the new proposal that they're implementing has agreed uh, to increase our dispensing fee by $1. Okay, can I ask something yes. too? For anybody in the public that's watching as well, there was another thing that I thought the government helped pharmacy with, and correct me again if I'm wrong, but you were also looking to reduce that cost by having a change to the Pharmacy Act that let pharmacy assistants come into play, so that it would be actually, actually a human resource um, that, benefit That too. would have been fine under the present model, however, with the revenue that's being taken out of every Okay, but pharmacy, that was an effort, so well, the government has no, been working with there, you, there right? is, it's not but, always but, confrontational. Uh, no, it's not confrontational, but where I'm trying to go with this, there's a big funding shortfall between the $8 proposed and almost $14 to actually cost us. That was made up by the professional allowances, which we understand has to be done away with to bring the cost of drugs down. The fact of the matter is that the seniors and chronically ill do not pay for their medication. It doesn't matter what price, it's all funded by the taxpayer. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Why are we reading and hearing that can it, Ontarians in particular spend 25 to 75 percent more for their drug costs than even European countries, Americans? Absolutely false. Absolutely false. So where is that coming? And I well, challenge we'll Greg today. You. I challenge Greg today to, for public consumption, submit a proper study comparing generic drug prices in Ontario across Canada, province by province, and then comparing it to the United States and the rest of Europe. And you will find that we are not only the cheapest in Canada, but we're also the cheapest across the board uh, comparing to the United States. When you go to other countries, it's actually irresponsible to float out these prices per pill. You need, you need to look at what does it cost the end consumer. And they have failed to show those prices. So it's really quite meaningless 
when they say it's two cents a pill in New Zealand when we're not comparing apples to apples. Let's talk and this about is quite misleading. Farid, let's talk about the two cents. And